Welcome to the iCoach Kids Spotlight series. We'll be joined by world-leading coaches, researchers and practitioners sharing their expert insights. All of these insights are to help us in our mission to champion sport policy, education and practice that puts kids first. Be sure to join us at iCoachKids.org to learn, coach and connect. So let's dive in. Hi everyone and welcome back to the iCoach Kids Spotlight series. Today we are joined by Chris van der Hagen of the Royal Belgian FA. Uh, great to have you with us today, Chris. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, so uh, as, as always, uh, let's uh, share some of, of our experience, our Belgian experience with uh, the whole world of uh, children coaches and uh, to make yeah to make the environment a better environment for everybody for kids but also for the coaches absolutely and and as as our viewers will know we have explored so far experts experiences of, of bringing the the i coach kids pledge to life and in this instance today we're going to start to look at how we can use competition in a developmental way um, and I wonder if you can just share some insights, Chris, onto some of the guidelines that you have offered um, within grassroots football in Belgium and what, what's really been the impact of that with the children playing on the ground? Yeah, maybe just yeah, to, to have an introduction about, about the, the, the environment that, uh, that we had at, at the certain moment. And yeah, maybe the, the, the adjective is, is a little bit exaggerated um, but yeah we, we had like a, a too to toxic environment toxic for the kids toxic for the for the parents toxic for the coaches and when i say toxic it's maybe it's, it's a little bit exaggerated but you need to exaggerate to have impact on on the people um, around you so um, there was only one thing that that uh, that was dominating the the sport environment and what that was winning winning the game and uh, winning the game not only in the in the mindset of the coach, but also in the mindset of the parents. And and what was the consequence? Yeah, um, coaches focusing on result, which means, um, yeah, uh, I, I will put the players on the on the pitch who have the biggest impact on the result of the game, which means the strong ones, they have the physical strong ones, they have a. Uh, a huge impact on the game so they they have a lot of playing opportunity and then on the other side yeah the the younger ones the the late mature players the small ones yeah they were always this the bench players the substitute players and they, they got less playing time so consequences players don't like the, the game anymore they drop out especially at the age of 15 16 years old and um, and what we also saw was uh yeah not the best atmosphere among parents because also the parents they we understand they have a stressy week with work and then they come on the pitch in the weekend to support their their kids and the first the the, the, the main idea was oh we have to do everything to to win that game with the coach with our players and and it creates yeah uh, bad relationships between between parents because Parents of the strong ones, they are happy because their kids play all the time. And then the other ones uh, who have a kid who's a little mature one, who, who doesn't get a lot of playing opportunity, you got discussions and yeah. So that was really um, a bad situation. So we tried to, to spread the more positive uh, message about everyone should have 50% of the playing time because that's why you train. They come two or three times in the week, in week to, to have a training sessions and, and the training session has only one objective to have to enjoy the game together and to prepare for the game for the weekend to prepare for the competition and everybody every player they play they train for playing that game in the in the competition that's like yeah the final moment of of, of a whole week uh, on Saturday or for some of them on Sunday so if, if you can't give that final moment of, of, of joy to your players, there is the, the, the cherry on the cheese on the cheesecake is missing. 
So if we can't give them that cherry on, on the cake, yeah, as a coach, you should feel really, yeah, unhappy. And, and you should have the feeling that I, I didn't get my objectives because these I didn't achieve the real objective because the real object, objectives are not winning that game in the competition. The real objective is having a fun environment around football together during the week and then a final moment to show what we have learned during this week, to show it to your coach, but also to your parents and to, to, to live together. Yeah, that experience of success or not success of we have worked the whole week. Now let's do it against an opponent. And then we see what's the result. And that game should be the, the first step of the next week. So the games of the competition, it's like, yeah, the, 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 the glue that keeps everything together. That, it should be like that. The game should be like the glue that keeps the players and the coaches, the individuals, as a team together with the coach. But what did we see? That it wasn't at all the glue. Because, because of the game, some of them, they really felt happy. But some others, they didn't feel happy at all. And you got yeah, two parts of the team, the players who could who have a lot of playing opportunity and the others. So we really wanted to change that situation um, because one of the other impacts of that toxic environment was uh, the reactions of the crowd, of the, of the parents, the reactions against the referee. So... We really have been thinking about what, what, what's the best strategy to create a, a child-friendly environment, environment of fair play, and environment of learning. And that's one of the slogans uh, that we used a lot in that context was, yes, yeah, see a competition as a, learning as a learning environment, a learning moment. Every game, it's not about the result. Every game, it's about learning. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. You lose, but every time you learn, and that should be the right, the right mindset of the coach, of the parents, and uh, and of the players. Uh, so, finally, we, we we tried to spread that message, and we, we saw that it wasn't that strategy wasn't effective enough. Um, we've pushed in all the regions. And finally, you see, okay, it doesn't work because the coaches, they say, okay, yes, yes, of course. And in the training sessions, it was, was really very, very well uh, organized with a good value um, for every player, with, with a lot of attention to every player. That was quite okay. But what did we see that when you come in the environment of emotions, the game, yeah, then they forget all their principles. And it's, yeah, it's all about winning. And we, we, we have to do everything to, get, to, to, to have a win. So we decided um, to help the coaches, but to help them by, by taking some, uh, some decisions um, that we really, that had an impact on, on the regulations. So we changed the regulations. And um, because of the main objective, we want the competition to be the best moment of player development. So that means everybody can play and we, we, we are going to organize the game in, a, in another format so that the coach can help the players to develop also during the game. And I explained. So how did we change the regulations? We play now like in basketball in four quarters. Yeah. What's the big advantage of four quarters that you have three moments during the game and a fourth moment immediately after the game where you can coach your players. Not when they are playing on the pitch and shouting them instructions. No, you have a moment, first quarter between first and second, at halftime, between third and fourth, and then you have a final moment to, to, to evaluate the game at the end where you, where you can ask your players some questions and give them some mini challenges for the next 15 or 20 minutes. Try to focus on this. Let's try this. Uh, after these 15, 20 minutes, you can ask them, and how did it work? So we create that different environment of the game to help them to coach the players and to help them to uh, develop the players during the game. That was one thing. And second, and that's the most important one, 
after every quarter, so when they change from first to second quarter, all the substitute players, they have to come on the pitch. So for the referee, it's very easy. He writes down the numbers who are on the bench. Uh, first quarter played, huh, all these players, all these players have to come on the pitch, which gives you automatically 50% of the playing time for all the players. And it makes the coaches also think about, okay, I'm, I'm, I don't want to, to have all the time the same players on the bench because they say, okay, if I, if I put all the weakest players together on the bench, when I make a change, yeah, the quality of the team is dropping down a lot. So they started thinking about making like a, a turnover, like every week, somebody else, a, a stronger one, a medium one, a, a weaker one, um, to have a good balance of the of the level of the of the team. So um, at the very beginning, oh, it was uh, it was the end of the of the world in Belgian football. Uh, a lot of criticism, um, even parents, uh, the parents who, who who saw that ah the result, the final result of the game, will be influenced by that operation. But that was the objective. Because we wanted all the players to be involved in the in the game, um, but now it's normal, and um, yeah, we are we are so happy about uh, uh, about that. Um, but you know, you always have have extreme situations. Sometimes you have players who say, "Oh, they don't do their best enough," because they know, "Ha, huh, I play." So that's also you, you cannot find the perfect solution. But that's also a, a, a yeah a base or a, a, to to start talking with your players. You know everybody will get the playing time, but what we expect from you as an individual to contribute to the team, and uh, yeah, we, we are really very happy um, about uh, these regulations. And before implementing them, we, we 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 did what we call in Belgium the Tour of Flanders. Flanders is my and nor northern region uh, to explain to to clubs to the managers of the academies um, this is the idea behind and this is how we want to do it and then we on, we we also ask them yeah to agree or not to agree because if they don't agree about the changes it makes no sense to implement them because they they try anything not to do it and then um, so but um, by explaining them. It, it was uh, quite okay because all the technical um, manager of the, the academies, they also know it's all about the players. We want our players to, to become better. And this is a, an, or this was a change of the regulation that was 100% to help the players uh, to feel better, to enjoy more the, the, the game and to be involved 100% uh, in the game. Have you have you found then um, that more players are now staying in the game? More players are, are playing football. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, it's not only because of that reason, but but it's 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 one of one of the main reasons because it's it's quite logic. If you don't feel valued as a player, if you are always the, the number 13, 14, 15, you cannot be, yeah, you say, okay, I uh, or the parents, uh, they, they, they support their kids. Say, no, no, you, it, keep, keep, keep playing, keep training, keep working. But finally, if they, 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 they keep playing, they keep working, they, but they, they, they want to get something back from that work and some, getting something back is only one thing. Can I play in the weekend? Can I play the game? And that's why they come to training. And... Um, for example, what, what we also have is in, in age groups. I, I give an example in my club. We have uh, 20 players, but 20 players for 22 players. For, for one team, it's too much. For two teams, it's not enough. So we made a really flexible format where you say, okay, you as a club, you can register with a normal team that plays 11 v 11, but you can also register with a, a second team that's playing 8v8, to, to have as many players as possible to be active on the pitch. Because, yeah, um, maximum number of substitutes is 50% of the players. So 
when you are uh, playing 11 v 11, there are uh, maximum five substitutes because it makes no sense to have much more because yeah, they, they, they won't have enough playing time. So that's the way how we try uh, to make to, with flexible formats to, to get as much uh, players as possible um, active in the game. I reflect as you're speaking there, Chris, on um, on my experiences as a player, as a as a young person, and um, and how much I feel like I would have. I mean, I, I love football. Football is my thing, right? But how much I would have loved playing even more under those conditions, because until I was 12, 13, I was always that player that was that trained every week, worked really hard, but only got two to three minutes at the end of each game. Yes, and then I only started playing fully when I, I, I had a growth spurt much quicker than all of my teammates. So I looked super quick. I looked so quick. I looked so strong. I could suddenly score goals. Not necessarily to do with my ability, but my physical stature was yeah, bigger yeah, than yeah. everybody else. But it was only then at 13, 14, 15, where I was playing regularly. Um, yeah. And it... it I didn't really think about it at the time because I, I just loved playing with my friends, but I, I can't help but feel that my love of the game and my enthusiasm to play would have come much, much sooner had I just had more opportunity to have the ball at my feet, be playing with my pals in the opposition. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, I had the same experience even much, much earlier. Um, but when I was a kid, there was... There was football, but there was not so many other opportunities. Today, there's plenty of opportunities. And if they can't play on the pitch, they can play on uh, the FIFA PlayStation. So that's also a big challenge for coaches and for, for sport uh, federations uh, to, to be aware about. That there's, yeah, they, they can do anything, but please let's organize the best possible environment to keep them active outside on the pitch. And we are a football association. We want them to keep in football, to stay in football. So that's also why we changed the whole format. You talked about 10 years old. Eh? Uh, we changed the whole uh, playing formats to have the best possible playing formats for the kids, not for the adults, because the adults, the real game is considered... Of everybody considers the real game is 11 v 11. But, but for kids, you talk about at 10 years old, 11 v 11. It's, it's impossible for kids 10 years old. So that, fortunately, we have made that move very early to create there also the best possible format with players, uh, twin teams, two teams of or 5 v 5, two teams of 8 v 8 playing next to each other, so that, that everybody can be involved with, with um, a lot of uh, constant substitution. So players can, can, they must be involved all the time. And, and they must have that feeling that, oh, I'm, I'm, I, can, I can play football. Uh, and also there, and that, that's good in, in our region here, we have three levels of competition. So everybody can find the right place for for for. for for himself as a, or herself as a player, if because if if you are in a club and the level is too high, yeah, it's not funny either. You must be at the right level, and and that's also something that that we really have been working on uh, a lot uh, to have these three levels of competition and to give everybody opportunity to play at at the right uh, at the right level. Um, and another important topic. Um, that we, uh, we we change the regulations and it, it's yeah terminology is, is a little bit difficult because you say oh, oh, you don't play competition in Belgium. Yes, we play competition, but there are no tables till the age of under fourteen, and we cancelled the regulations uh, the the uh, the tables just to get the mindset from of the coaches to get out of that mindset. The idea of winning, winning, winning results. So now today, till the age of under 14, every week they play a game. And it's like a competition because it's organized in, in groups, uh, organized by the AVA, but there are no tables, there are no results. And that the impact of that decision on the behavior of parents and players and the whole start 
in football environment, players come to the club at five years old and they have now nine years that they play outside of a competitive environment, a competitive mindset. There is a competition, they play the games, but it's just to learn to play, to, to, to play football, to learn and to become better and to enjoy football together with their friends and with their parents. But the tables, they just started under 14. So the, the foundation of, 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 the, of the football environment has been created in a non-competitive environment. And that is so, so, so useful for, uh, for making everybody understand why are we here? Why are we here as a coach? Why are we here as players? And why are we here as parents? And all of these, all of these three groups, they have a, a big role to play in that topic of competition in a developmental way. And you first need to create the awareness on the side of the parents and on the side of the coach. Because the players, they play to win. Of course they play to win. And, and the game is there to, yeah, to, to, to play to win. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But the mindset of the coach and the parents must not be winning. Must be, we are, uh, or kids, they are active in sport. We are there to support them and they will enjoy it and they will become better every day, every week. Every training week is the apotheose of the week. It's a game, competition, but not in a very competitive uh, spirit. I wonder, I, I recall in the UK, oh, possibly 15 years ago, maybe, there was this rule that you, you don't publish the results of children's games in the newspaper, which makes a lot of sense because that's where, that's where people would read results. But mm -hmm. in, in an age where social media is so powerful now, parents put the results on, on Twitter, on Facebook. My, mm -hmm. my little girl won 17 nil today against this team and, and it makes that cultural shift really difficult within clubs, within organisations, within federations. I wonder, what would your advice be to help bring parents on board with, with some of these key ideas in countries and nations that haven't necessarily got the rules that you've set in Belgium? Yeah, um, I think the most important thing is the, the, the awareness. So, because we had the same thing eh? at the moment when we, we decided to cancel the, the tables, uh, yeah, we, we came in in a clubhouse of the team and, and the tables, they were on the wall. They, they, they weren't on the, on the website of the AVE, they weren't anymore in the newspapers, but they were in the clubhouse. And then we said, no, 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 that's, that's, if, if we, if we explain you why we do it, please, if you understand, yeah, then you, if, if you, you, you shouldn't publish the, the results anymore on the wall in the, in the, in the clubhouse. And uh, I, today, even Twitter, all the things, Facebook, no, you, we, we don't see it anymore because it's, it's part of the system. Everybody understands now. And, and if it happens, it's, yeah, it's, it's because a parent of, or a coach doesn't really understand his role or her role in, in that process. And uh, parents' education is really crucial. Coaches' education, everybody knows that's, that's the key for, for creating the right environment. But parents' education is the second key. And parents should really understand that. I, I, I often gave the example to some of my, my coaches because we had some cases uh, who, who, who didn't want to understand at the very beginning. And then I always said, okay, we change the rule. If your child is playing with the, in the opponent team and they lose 18-0, how does that child feel? How does that parent feel? Why did we play a game? Because a game with 17-0 shouldn't be played. This is a mistake. This is really a mistake. So uh, that's also when we play in the four quarters and it happens that it's really an unbalanced or an unequal game. We say, okay, we, we start again 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah? And sometimes, and that's the flexibility, we let them to play one player more just to get it to get it right on the balance um, because the idea is the game is there to is a learning moment if you win 17-0 nobody learns anything nobody the team that wins 
doesn't learn anything. The coach doesn't learn anything. The team that loses doesn't le uh, learn anything either. That means this is, this is a game that's not useful. That's a wrong game. So we have, we have to, we really have to avoid this kind of situations. And that's why the three levels of competitions are help to, yeah, to put a team in this, at, at, at the right level. And in the beginning, so when we, when we register a team, we have to say it's uh, uh, average level, high level or lower level. At the beginning, we experienced that clubs, they say, they register their team and say, ah, low level. But in fact, they are not low level. They are more than average level. So what we see, they underestimate them, underrate them to, yeah, to help them to win the games. So also there, we make an intervention and say, no, no, it's just, this, this doesn't make, make sense. You, you have to, to get the right. And, and we play from September to December and from January to May. So we have two, two new competitions. So we can really reorganize it very quickly. Uh, and now today it's getting better and better and better because everybody understands why we do it in that way. And, and the why is really crucial to explain to parents and to coaches why we do it in that way. And do you think that, I mean, obviously that this has been a, a massive project within Belgium. Do you think that individual clubs um, outside of the Belgian jurisdiction, do you think that individual clubs are capable of setting this culture and environment too, no matter what culture they, they, they play their um, football in? Yeah, and, and uh, that's with, with the change of regulation, every, every season, every player can move from one club to another. So today, the environment is widely spread or the idea about it's all about the player because that's our first rule in, in, um, in developing players. Uh, it's all about the players. So what does it mean it's all about the players? They, they, they need to have the right coach to have playing time to be, to be able to enjoy and to become better. If parents, if they feel that in a club that culture isn't there, they change. They change from club. And the clubs, they're really very, it's like a social pressure on the clubs. They know this is the, the vision of the Belgian MV. If we don't fit into this vision, yeah, we will lose the players and they go to, 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 to our neighbors. So, um, and there is a, an, um, an, a quality control in the, in the grassroots club. So to, to have, yeah, to, to, to show to everybody this, clubs is, this club is a quality club. That means your, your children here, they are safe. They will, they will enjoy the game. They will learn. And the, co the coaches, they, 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 this is a guarantee that they will be developed in the right way. So this system of quality control has also helped a lot to, yeah, to put some pressure on the clubs to say, okay, we really need to work on that culture and, uh, of, and, and player well-being. Chris, at, at the end of every iCoach Kids Spotlight, um, we ask all of our guests three questions. Um, so the first one is, and, and this it's quick for me to ask, right? But it's not always quick for our guests to answer. But what is good coaching to you? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a very broad spectrum. Eh? Coaching, it's a very broad spectrum. Uh, let's talk, let's focus first on children's coaching. Um, and, and, and I try to explain what's good coaching to me, starting from that, that example. Um, first, of, first of all, for me, the coach should be the guide. The guide for the players. They take, the coach takes them on a journey in football, and he is the guide. He should know what the destination can be. Can be. Because he has the experience, he has the knowledge, he got the education, so he should be able to find the right destination for his group of players. But a good coach is not the one 
who only uses his education to say, ah, that's what I've learned in my coaching badges. So I'm going to do this and this and this and this. No, the good coach is the one who has this in his backpack and then who watches who's in front of him. Who are his players? How, how skillful are they? What can I get out of them? How can I get all of them? And that's the most important thing for me. A good coach is able to take all the individual players on the journey to get them, to help them, to help them to maximize their potential. That means, for me, a good coach starts at the beginning of the season with 15 players. He should finish the season with at least 15 players. Maybe one or two more because some friends, got, they know from the other players, oh, in our team, with our coach, it's, it's amazing. Yeah? But what we see in reality is every season you lose one or two or three players. And that's because there was something wrong with creating the best possible environment. And that's, for me, uh, a good coach. And then automatically, because that's the result of the process, automatically that the players, all the individuals, will become better, the team will become better, and automatically there will be results. They will, they will win games. But that's the process. Yeah, The good coach is the one who says, okay, all my individuals, I know all of them, I listen to them, and I adapt our destination in function of what I, what I get out of my players during, during the season. That's, for me, good coaching. And you can just transfer this to senior football and even to the professional football because it's the, it's the same journey. The only difference at the professional game is, yeah, it's their profession. So, but they also, they also want to be all on the pitch. They also want to be valued on every training session. That's an incredible answer. Thank you. Um, what's the one thing then, if you, if you had that magic bullet, what would be the one thing that you would change about youth sport to make the experience better for children? Yeah, it, it, uh, it, it, there, there can be changed a lot of things. But the, uh, the idea that I have is, uh, if we could change that, but I probably we can't. Um, I would like to create the best training environment and playing environment without coaches. So making the coaches so competent that they can become like invisible and making the kids, the players so competent that they, that they can become driver of their own development and that they come become the coach of themselves and also the coach of the other kids. So that the real coach, he's just there to observe, to organize, to assist, and that he really can empower the kids and the, and the players to, to take over the role um, as a coach. Because the big advantage of this would be that when the coach isn't there, that means when they are not on the training pitch, but when they are at home, at school, or when they are watching TV, when they are watching football, you don't need the coach anymore to learn. They take over the role of the coach, they become their own coach, and they can learn all the time. And that, yeah, that would be great that in that sport environment, we would be able to, to develop coaches with these competences, and also players making them um, like autodidactics uh, and, and making them learn uh, by themselves. But I think, yeah, um, it's, a, it's, it's it will be in a special world. And, and I hope uh, if we can reach that level of competences on both sides, players making them more uh, autonom autonomous, how you say in English, yeah. Uh, and then coaches making them less visible, um, because, at my opinion, and, and I'm, the, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a bad example now, coaches, they talk too much. They should listen more. And that's one of the rules in that. That coach, you're invisible, you're observing, you're listening, and you help them to do the right things. And I, th I think I'd really encourage our audience who are watching and listening 
Um, if, you, if you've got examples of your practice or you've seen some really good practice where the, the children are so empowered that the coach can be on the sideline, please share your stories with us. We'd love, we'd love to hear what, what's, going out on, what's going on out on the ground. Um, the final question from me, Chris, would be, what is the biggest difference in your coaching now compared to when you first started coaching? In my personal coaching. In your personal coaching. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Easy. Very easy question. Very easy question. <laughs> uh, and, and it's, it's um, I think that everybody, who, every coach is going through the same uh, evolution. Uh, when you start coaching, when I first started coaching, you want to get control over everything. You want to control everything. Oh, you want to be prepared and they have to do this. And, and all the time you, you, you have your ID. And then you observe and you see that yeah, there's something something else happening. And you want to, to correct all the time and to make interventions. Hey, yeah, do it like that. And, and you can't inter intervene all the time. So you start giving instructions. Do this, do that, do that. And that's, that's the way everybody is going through. But now today, you go to, you, you announced it already. Uh, if you are talking all the time, if you are giving instructions all the time, you are making two errors at the same moment. First of all, the players, they don't hear you, they don't, they don't listen, and they have to make their own decisions. And secondly, if you are shouting all the time, you can't see what you have to see. So taking that step behind, observing, and now I think about in youth football here with the, with the, with the four quarters, observe very well, and know what, knowing what you want to observe to help them when there is a break. And if you are giving instructions and shouting all the time and then there is the, the timeout, you don't know what to tell them because you haven't, be, you, you haven't prepared that. You have been obs observing everything, but you can't observe everything. So that's how we see for, for every 15 or 20 minutes is a quarter. We, we try to have one or two focus points and we change it from one quarter to, not, to another. Um, and, and yeah, that's the biggest difference. Uh, but it's also because of experience. You, you know, you can't, the game is random. You can help it, the players to prepare, but once the game is started, you are out of the game as a coach. So stay out of the game and start observing when they come back that you can help them to, to get uh, them to a better level in, in the next uh, 15 or 20 minutes. Thank you. Um, where can our uh, viewers and listeners, where can they keep up to date with everything that you're doing? Do you have social media? Is there any other ways that they can follow you? Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, sometimes I get I put some messages on Twitter. Um, yeah, on social media. Uh, because I'm, I'm traveling with our, with our women's national team as an assistant coach. Um, but uh, yeah, in my job of coach education director, um, I'm also follow up, following up uh, our vision of development of the Belgian FA. So uh, we have now next week, we have a grassroots coach education workshop uh, with UEFA at the Belgian FA. Also there, there will be uh, probably, because we, we, we are, uh, there are five national associations who are coming to visit Belgium. And we're going to show them how, how we create what we, what we call a festive food for children six and seven years old. So uh, we prepared yesterday to have some drone to, to uh, capture it on video. And uh, for sure, I, uh, I, will, I, will, uh, I will send you some examples and I will share it on, uh, on Twitter and, uh, and on Facebook. So if they want to, uh, to follow up, they have an idea about how that works. Um, I'm uh, I'm very happy to share uh, to share that with you. Yeah, and, and I and I encourage our audience to do just that. And, and what I'll do, uh, you'll see, come up on your screen shortly. I'll put Chris's Twitter handle across the screen. Be sure to to keep track of of all that's going on, including um, the Euros uh, that are coming up in July for for the the women's team in Belgium. Chris, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. Um, We'll be certainly sure to check in with you um, throughout the rest of this year and beyond. It's been a real pleasure having you on board. It was a real pleasure for me, like it always is when we are in the iCoach Kids environment. So take care and all the best on your journey. Mm -hmm.